Welcome and thank you for joining our webinar on viewing the latest feature releases for Workday. My name is Kim Anselmo and I will help facilitate our webinar today. But before we get started, here are a few tips on using the Zoom platform so you can engage with our presenters and have the best experience possible. Next slide, Justin, please. So you should see a Zoom toolbar with icons for ask a question, chat, and raise your hand. You can use the ask a question or chat to submit a question or comment anytime throughout the presentation. If you do need any assistance, click on the raise your hand and I will connect with you to help out. Um, as we mentioned, do ask questions throughout the presentation. We'll do our best to answer them all as we can. If we do not answer a question that you asked, we will personally follow up with you um, following this presentation. Next slide. Um, and for audio, if you do experience any issues, um, you can click and change your audio preferences during the presentation. At the bottom left-hand corner of the Zoom meeting toolbar, you'll find either the headphones or microphone logo to join audio or mute and unmute. Click the join audio to choose to connect to your computer audio or dial into the meeting with the, by a phone. Once your audio is connected, click mute to disable the audio or unmute to enable your audio. And also, I just want to let you know that within 72 hours of the webinar, you will receive a link to download this slide deck and the recorded presentation. Next slide. And today's webinar does qualify for CPE credits. So to receive your credits, you must actively respond to each polling question and stay on for the duration of the webinar. If you have any difficulties answering the poll questions, please email elevate at armeninollp.com with questions um, with the name and date of your session along with your poll responses as well. And with that, let's go to the next slide. I would like to introduce our presenters today, Justin Mitkus and Brianna Johnston. Hi guys, I'm Justin um, and I'm presenting with Brianna and we're doing this in conjunction and um, we're gonna walk through kind of some of the Workday Financials highlights as well as Adaptive. And so just a bit of background on me, uh, myself and also our practice. Um, I've been in the Workday ecosystem now for about eight years in a host of roles, both on the customer or client side supporting internal organizations, as well as on the consulting side, um, doing net new Workday implementation, as well as post-production support and, and managed service. So our practice at Armanino from a financial standpoint is, is brand new, right? So we're about, I would say, six months old. Um, we are a long-standing adaptive partner, and so we've been in the Workday ecosystem for quite some time. Uh, we've now joined and partnered with Workday on the financial side um, and are incredibly excited to offer both financials and adaptive services to our clients. So I look forward to walking kind of everyone through the agenda. But Brianna, you want to introduce yourself real quick? Yeah, thank you, Justin. Uh, Brianna Johnston. Um, I am our FP&A Solutions Manager here at Armanino, focused on adaptive insights. Um, my history here at Armanino is um, I joined back in 2018 as an implementer, so I am certified in the tool. Um, I'm very excited to share with you what's coming out in this new release um, during this webinar. Um, and as Justin mentioned, we are um, a longtime partner of Adaptive um, and so we're really excited to bring um, Finns on board and share with you also those updates as well. Thank you. All right, so the agenda. So the way that we have this outlined today is we're gonna cover, uh, the first topic we're gonna cover is kind of the, the Workday and Adaptive conjoined um, release kind of Number one, the actual release of what's coming, but also kind of the, the strategy or the way that you want to think about some of these releases coming now and in the future. And then we'll dive into a couple of Workday financial specific release items um, and then pivot over to then adaptive specific release items. And for each one of these, again, Kim mentioned, please chime in, please drop some questions in as we're going through and we'll be happy to, to address those. Um, we're going to start this off by um, kicking off a poll, and we have a couple of these. 
um, intended to kind of help guide the conversation and make sure that we are focusing on, on the things that people care about the most. So that said, let's jump to our first poll and it's what Workday products are you currently using? And feel free here, of course, this is a multi-select, you can pick more than, more than one. Great, so I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll. Right, so we've got, we've got a good mix and it's exciting. We actually have a couple PRISM and Accounting Center users, but we have a, a heavy adaptive user base, which, which I can certainly, certainly appreciate. All right, let's jump into kind of topic number one here. And we're gonna talk about Office Connect. And before I get to the detail of kind of what the release covers, as it relates to Office Connect, I want to take a quick step back and just kind of outline the history of Office Connect, uh, what it is, what it does, what it's intended to do, and how you should think about using it. So the large adaptive crew we have on the phone is probably more familiar with Office Connect um, compared to everybody else, right? And that's because Office Connect came from the Adaptive Insights um, acquisition. Right, it was a native part of the product, and it was obviously focused on plan data, right? And it gives that kind of consistent user FP&A user experience that people I think are used to with other um, legacy FP&A tools. So recently, and I think it started in in um, the first release earlier this year, Workday's kind of now introduced the concept of Office Connect to the the broader platform. Right, and so in 2022 R1, we saw Workday introduce Office Connect for financials, right? And that gave you the ability to report on actuals using Excel, using the Office Connect product. Okay, and now as we come to 22 R2, Workday's furthering the investment in Office Connect and now allowing us to not only report on the actuals data coming out of Workday, but also bring it together with the plan data to give us a little bit more meaningful reporting from a plan versus actual perspective. So with that being said, that is exactly the focus here, right? And the idea behind Office Connect, for those that aren't as familiar, Right, it's it's everybody's familiar with the office suite of products, Excel, Word, PowerPoint, et cetera. Right. And Office Connect gives us that ability to bring workday reports into Excel or PowerPoint or Word, right? And to kind of allow us to drill, to report, to analyze, to link cells and rows and calculate and do all the things that we're used to doing in in those products. The other thing it does that I think is really important and um, something that I you kind of hear kind of consistently across the, the Workday product suite, you, it still holds true on security, on dimensionality, on rules. So if you think about, you know, you run a trial balance report in Workday and it automatically does the consolidating and eliminating based on the, the things that you're selecting. All of that holds true here, right? And so if you don't have access to the data in Workday in the UI, you won't have access to it through Office Connect and you'll still get the same experience. The numbers will look the same. So you're not gonna have to spend a bunch of time trying to reconcile manual components of data, right? You're, you're really just looking at Workday data, but in, in a, a Office product suite. Okay. So let's jump in a little bit in, in terms of, of what we've got now and, and, and a couple of things um, foundationally that need to be in place in order for this to work. But first off, in order for us to do this reporting of plan versus actuals using Workday Financials as the data source, we've got to have the actual plan and the plan data in Workday. 
right? And so that information in a perfect world is gonna come from adaptive and it's gonna be entered and stored in Workday, whether that's for reporting, which is what we're talking about today, or other operational things, right? Maybe enforcing budgets where, you know, an invoice may come in and, you know, you're over the budget and, and there are triggers a workflow. But of course, we rely on the data being in Workday in order for us to report on the data. Once it's there, it's this very similar feel um, that you're used to, quite frankly, right? And so you're bringing in the data, you've got things on the left, the left pane here that kind of outlines based on the data source here, here's the information that's available to you. And it's as simple as a drag and drop into Excel, um, update the data. So again, for people that are either newer to adaptive or maybe are not even adaptive users, but have used other FP&A planning tools, this offers a very similar look and feel to, to those tools, right? And so there's a level of familiarity here. And then, so once the data is here, and obviously you can see here, it's in a, it's in a high level, you have the ability then to drill down, right? And so this drill down, of course, is, is only as good as the level of detail that you have your plan or actual data. But the idea here is you can drill down and keep, continue to drill down to get to the bottom level of the information you're after, right? And you can see, of course, to the right, we could have cells that we're calculating variances, whether it's percents, dollars, linking all these things, whether that's in like a board deck, um, whether it's just simple ad hoc analysis as a part of the month end close reporting process. Um, but this kind of helps you bring it together. So just to round this out quickly, a couple of things that are required. Um, you, you've got to have this enabled, number one. It's not enabled out of the box. You have to go and enable it. And you have to do a little bit of setup around the versions that you're going to store in Workday. And you've got to get the data into Workday in order to store it, right? And then the second part is a little more administrative. You've got to install the Office Connect plugin um, and do some of that one-time setup to get you connected. Um, and again, that's kind of where all your security and all of that um, comes into play. So with that being said, we are going to run into our second polling question. Are you currently using Office Connect? This is an easy one. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close the poll and share. All right. And so the results here, and Kim, I'm sorry, are, do, do they pop up automatically or do I need to pull them up so people can see them? Oh, uh, I share them automatically. I share them. <laughs> oh, Justin, are you seeing the results? I am not, but it could be because I'm sharing my screen. So I will talk through them as long as everybody else can see them. Yep. Uh, and so th this is no surprise, right? I think this is something that we see consistent. So the, the results are primarily split uh, between, yes, I'm using Office Connect, but only for adaptive and flat out no, right? And so I, I think, and the, there's, a, there's a jokester or a couple maybe of what is Office Connect, um, which I appreciate. But I think that this is one of those things, right? As you look at the, the Workday and Adaptive platform and whether you're using them together or, or individually, Office Connect is one of those things where you get value, but it's not necessarily required that you enable or use it, right? And so as you work through, sometimes it makes sense, right? It's another tool in the tool belt, right? Sometimes it makes sense to use a report in Workday because you need to drill. But sometimes it makes sense to, to use Office Connect to maybe update a board deck, right? And so that you don't have to manually update numbers every month or every quarter just to present, um, you know, to a management style type, type of report. And so not surprised and excited. I think it's just another one of those areas that Workday is investing. And we'll see another one here in just a second in terms of how you can be more efficient, effective when it comes to the overall reporting landscape out of Workday and Adaptive. Great, thanks, Justin. Yep, thank you. All right. 
All right, so moving on. Next topic we're going to cover are tre the Treasury Discovery Board for cash management. So this one again, same same concept as the first one. I'm going to take a second just to introduce the idea or the concept of discovery boards because these are newer. Like we just talked about with Office Connect, kind of growing from the adaptive acquisition, discovery boards grew from the Prism acquisition. Right. And so the product it was a capability of, of Prism and its analytic tool. Workday's now spent the last couple of releases not only broadening the scope of discovery boards and bringing them over to the financial side of the application, but also investing in building delivered discovery boards to kind of serve as a starting point for people to kind of go in get a sense of you know some some fundamental reports on how they look and how they work and then give you and empower you give you the ability to to make changes based on on um your ultimate your your requirements and so this is step one we're going to focus this this release is on the treasury discovery board um there are others that are out there and that workday continues to build out they publish them they become a part of a release and then they're available for consumption We'll see a little bit about what that looks like in a second here. Just real brief, a couple things that are important about discovery boards. And this kind of goes back to what I was saying about the, the different tools in the tool belt, right? And so discovery board is not going to solve all of your reporting problems or challenges or solutions, right? But it's going to be something that you're going to use in certain scenarios, whether it's real-time insight, whether it's pivoting and just doing an ad hoc analysis and doing it in real time, whether it's making something look pretty, whether it's you know a heat map or a scatter plot, we'll see kind of what it looks like. And one of the big differences I think between discovery boards and what people are used to in the native workday reporting function, whether it's you know advanced reports, matrix, composite reports, et cetera, it's a little bit more familiar because it's built in a drag and drop capacity. And so you'll see what that looks like in a second, but the ability to do this ad hoc on data, again, all secured um, with, with the same security you see in the rest of the platform, uh, it's just to give you that real time insight. This is visual. I'm actually gonna jump into the tenant here real quick and show you kind of what, what this could look like. So I'm logged into just our to a, our GMS tenant, and I'm just going to do a couple navigation steps to get to our discovery board, and then I'll, I'll talk through um, what we're looking at and how you want to think about these things. I'm logged in as Teresa Serrano, the CFO, uh, for those that are familiar with the GMS tenants. Um, all the discovery boards are, are stored in the drive. A lot of times people aren't familiar with the drive and what it does, and, and you'll probably see some different things in here. but I'll skip through them, but this is the center. This is where you're going to find your discovery boards. This is where you're going to find things that are shared with you, things that you create, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just going to jump into our, our discovery board and cover just a couple kind of high-level concepts here and walk you through what you're seeing. So number one, this is delivered out of the box in this current format, all right? And so a couple things to note. You can see already there are multiple types of visual uh, visualization tools, right? You're seeing all different kinds. Um, you're seeing multiple tabs. You're seeing information, scorecards, targets, variances, et cetera, et cetera. And so the idea here is these these are configurable, right? And so if you don't like the look of this pie chart, well, that's great, right? Simply go and edit that and go ahead and, and change what it looks like. Right, you have a whole bunch of different options. Right, I talked about that drag and drop concept. You can see here is very straightforward. We've got the bank and the number uh, of, of statements. Right, and so if we need to bring something else in, for example, whatever that may be, it's simply a drag and drop right into the axis or the angle or whatever it is you're after. Drop the information in, automatically update, save it, and then you have a couple options. Right, these these can be very personal where you know, you use these things for, for your own consumption, right? Or you have the potential to build something as a report builder, as a report publisher, and then publish the discovery board to the, a wider audience. So more people can consume it, more people can take a look. 
And so that's part one. And then part two is everything else you're used to from Workday, right? If you're interested in, let's say, um, this number and why it looks this way, right? Well, you can drill, right? And you can start to do the same things that you're all used to, right? Is you can drill and let's say, hey, maybe let's look at this by statement, right? And I can see the balance by statement. And of course, all of this is configurable in terms of what information shows up here. Um, and you can pull things in, you can remove stuff, et cetera. But the idea here is that this gives you a, a real-time ability kind of as an end user to be able to, to kind of empower yourself and build reports on your own um, and then make them, quite frankly, look nice and make them actionable, right? That's the most important is if something looks nice, that's great. There's a lot of tools that do that. But if you highlight something and see that, you know, hey, this number just doesn't look as I'm expecting it to look, well, you have the ability to take the real-time insight, look at the details, drill down, everything you're kind of used to from, from the platform. Okay, so in terms of configuration, it's actually rather straightforward, right? You, you're going, these are uh, delivered out of the box. And so you can go out as a person, as long as you have the, the right security, you can go in and create these things on your own. Um, pick your sources, start to drag and drop. It's really a pretty simple setup work that makes it very easy to take these delivered discovery boards and uh, apply them very quickly. Okay. So that covers discovery boards and, and hopefully from a high level standpoint, you get an idea. The tactical example here, because Workday is releasing these as a part of the, the R2 release is treasury, but hopefully the concept resonates that it doesn't have to be just treasury. It could be supplier invoices. It could be revenue. It could be expense. It could be, you know, anything you can visualize in the tool in a drag and drop manner. All right, and last but not least, journal insights. Okay, and so again, if we if we take a step back and look at journal insights um, as an example of a far larger initiative by Workday around machine learning and artificial intelligence, right? And so the idea here is, you know, make make the job that you do a little bit more efficient, a little bit more effective. Um, you know, ultimately get towards that idea of a zero day close, right? And and the concept here is, is it's pretty simple, right? Is that Workday is continually monitoring the, the transactions, the journals that are flowing through your system and it's looking out and it's learning for trends, for combinations of things. Um, and so that it can provide you insight into saying, hey, look, something doesn't look right in the month of February based on all the activity we've seen you book over the last, call it 12 months. And so if we look at something very tactical as an example, next slide here. So this is an example here. And so the idea here is Workday is out to, to look for unique combinations of things like accounts, maybe spend categories, revenue categories, whether things are missing or different or whatever it may be that just makes it quite frankly considered an anomaly, Workday highlights those on your behalf. And then depending on the process you put around this, you have the ability to dismiss it. You know, maybe it is a one-time journal and it is valid, right? You don't want Workday to continually every month tell you that there's something wrong, right? You can dismiss it and it'll ignore it. Um, and so there, there's a whole workflow and process around taking action on the actual insight. Now, this one's a little bit different in terms of setup. Um, number one, you have to opt into the innovation service. So this is a combination of either through your customer success manager or your account manager. Um, you have to enable and opt into this. And then once you do that, there's just a couple real basic steps to set up around, you know, once Workday kind of raises an anomaly, what exactly do you want to happen? And what are the scenarios around how you dismiss or accept or review any of the anomalies?
All right. And so that closes off on the Workday Financials key updates for uh, Workday R2. Brianna, I think over to you for the adaptive ones. Yep. Thank you, Justin. Uh, let me get my screen up here. Okay. Um, so with the adaptive updates, um, the first thing you'll notice when the uh, release is rolled out is there's going to be some visualization and appearance um, changes. And this is really just to promote consistency across all the Workday platforms and, and shouldn't be a huge effect on um, everyday functionality. I do want to focus today on those functionalities that I think are most impactful and you might find most useful. Um, one of those being uh, the bulk add rows on cube sheets and I know this has been a long time request so we're really excited about it. Um, so this functionality will enable you to add rows in bulk onto cube sheets, as well as sheet dials on dashboards. So if you're bringing that cube sheet into that active dashboard, you'll be able to um, add rows in bulk. Um, you'll be able to multi-select the innermost values of your nested row structure when you add the rows. And this will save you time when you're entering into a cube sheet and provides more support for that multi-dimensional planning that you're doing. Uh, when you add the row on the cube sheet, you now it now enables you up to select up to six dimensions when you create that row for each of the dimensions. Um, but it's it's worth noting that you can only multi-select for the innermost values on your nested dimension structure. So um, really excited about this rollout and um, you know there'll be some more information available to you on um, you know Workday site on how to configure all of this as you're moving forward. Um, but really excited that that's an opportunity now. Um, next polling question number three. Oops, sorry, I think I hit too many. There we go. Um, what types of sheets are you currently using in Adaptive? Okay, we have lots of answers coming in. I'll give you just a few more seconds. And I'll go ahead and close the poll in just three two, one. All right, thanks for your answer. So it looks like we're using um, all of the sheets, especially the modeled sheets, and, and that's understandable because I know personnel planning is huge and that's typically a modeled sheet. Um, cube sheets, if you're not currently using them, um, are a great way to get uh, dynamic views of your data and being able to import that, input that as a uh, dynamic with dimensionality and get you down to that granularity that you're looking for. Um, oftentimes we see cube sheets around revenue planning and things like that. So if you're not utilizing cube sheets and you're interested in learning more about how you can, feel free to reach out. Happy to, to set up some time to talk through it. All right, another major release um, for R2 is calendar updates. Um, so with the calendar updates, the new functionality that's available will allow you to, um, it enables you to display data in time rollups that differ from your default calendar, which enables you to provide alternate rollup structures. So what that means is your default calendar may be, you know, a monthly stratum or a weekly stratum. This now allows you to do an alternate view. Um, and here's just a, a quick screenshot of what it looks like on your calendar. And now, not everybody might be not everybody might be familiar with this um, view. It is an administrator view, um, and where you maintain your calendar. But what I'm trying to show you here is that um, you'll see at the top that calendar. Um, currently, you probably can't see that. When the release happens, you'll be able to now do a drop down and choose the different calendars. Um, so maybe you have a different calendar year versus fiscal year, or maybe something based on pay periods. So you'll be able to have those different calendar rolls ups. Um, it, you'll be allowed to um, do all, up to three alternate calendars. 
um, and you'll be able to add columns for the alternate calendars that map to the leaf strata from the default calendar and add rows to that default calendar. And the way it works is you'll have, want to have one common time strata with your default calendar. At minimum, the alternate calendars must share the smallest strata with the default calendar. Um, so with this, you'll also be able to customize those calendar names and change them going forward should you need to. Um, and you'll also be able to um, report using the time granularities um, that don't exist in the default calendar structure. Um, so that's for both Office Connect and within those uh, HTML reports or web-based reports. So you'll be able to see, see here when we're doing that drag and drop into an HTML report, you not only have your default calendar, but then you also have your alternate calendars available as well for that drag and drop into, um, for example, here a matrix report, or you'll even be able to do that within, uh, within your dashboards as well. So here's a view of, of what that looks like and I hope this isn't too small and hard to see, but you'll notice in that HTML report, we have all three of those time stratums in one report for that comparison. And then we'll also be able to, within the dashboards, toggle between those different calendars as well. And I think this is something that has long time been asked for. Um, so we're really excited about that. Um, you'll also be able to toggle between those alternate calendars within sheets as well. So, um, and that's for any type of sheet, whether it's standard, modeled, or cubed. Um, it is worth noting, however, that there are some limitations with this. Um, so when you're in an alternate calendar, it'll be for view only. You will not be able to drill down or enter data when you're on an alternate calendar. You'll only be able to do those things when you're on the default calendar. Um, some other updates that I want to make sure we touch on today outside of the, uh, the cubes and the calendars is the um, update and appending attributes. So um, we, well, let me back up a second because I've missed a point that I wanted to make for those alternate calendars. Um, and the reason I want to go back to that is um, I just want to highlight the benefits of the alternate calendars. So they can help remove or reduce the need for um, complex integration loaders, multiple instances, and complicated report elements, other time consuming workarounds that you might be doing right now where you have those um, alternate calendars set up. I know I've seen um, some clients where we have, you know, time set up as dimensions and things like that to work around some of those complications. And so this will help you get past those workarounds and we can help set up the alternate calendars with you to better report off of and get those uh, visualizations as well. Um, some use cases that you might um, consider using the alternate calendar is if you are, um, currently entering data in the calendar year, but you need to view some of your data according to the fiscal year. Or if you plan most of your fiscal dating use, using a week, month, quarter stratum, but maybe your labor pay periods are biweekly and roll up into a payroll year of week, pay period, pay year, that, those would be great use cases for the alternate calendar if you're trying to think of ways that it might be beneficial to you and your organization. Okay, so jumping back into the other updates and added functionality. Um, uh, we have now enabled um, uh, you to add new account level and custom dimension attributes and attributes value, values, as well as update the attributes and attribute values with one import, which will save you a lot of time and effort. So just some additional functionality there. 
Um, you'll also um, be able to use Contra accounts in adaptive planning to help you align your account hierarchy and, with your source system. Um, we also have some dashboard functionality updates. Um, we've optimized sheets on dashboards. Um, you'll be able to edit and create sheets on the dashboards, and this enables you to use new versions of sheets on the dashboards that improves loading times. Um, this particular functionality, um, you'll want to contact your name support, uh, your name support contact to enable this feature. Um, when you enable it, what you'll be able to do is um, only view data on the sheet to add or edit the data, and you can maximize the sheet that way. Search and filter on the sheet data. The other toolbar options are only available in the maximize view, and you'll be able to select dimension pickers on a cube sheet. Um, they'll, they'll gray out the dimension pictures that match the person pickers that match the perspective context filters. So it just gives you um, more control um, with that feature. Um, with dashboards, you'll also be able to copy and paste charts. So in the more menu on the charts, you'll be able to rename and duplicate, ch duplicate chart options in the edit mode. And then you'll also be able to copy entire dashboards. So you'll be able to, in the more menu as well, on the dashboard tab, rename and duplicate the dashboard option in edit mode to copy, clarifying that you can now copy and paste dashboards into any perspective. So if you've got a dashboard that you really like, you want to bring it into another perspective, maybe it's sitting in your executive view, but you also want it to be in your sales view, you can now copy that from one perspective to another and saves you a, a lot of time of having to rebuild that information. Another area where we are seeing some great improvements is within integrations. So with this release, we're, um, we're enabling data streaming from the planning data source in Adaptive which improves your export performance. Uh, with this update, you'll also be able to specify which modeled sheet columns you retrieve by including those columns in the export uh, filters element. And we're also seeing some great updates around APIs. So in your model sheet elements um, on the API, you'll be able to add new account precisions as well as um, secure security APIs around your customer information and custom integrations, which will save time with that and manual effort. This is another feature where you'll want to contact your service executive or named support contact to enable the feature. And this particular feature we only recommend if you have over 100 planning users. So uh, kind of a, a limited feature there. And then we're also delivering uh, multi-instance user access REST API endpoint uh, where you can link multiple adaptive planning instances. Um, and you can use the endpoint to assign a user to multiple instances and designate the default instance in that case. The APIs are also being improved to deliver new import groups. So workday security groups and their associated users in adaptive planning and you'll be able to import those user groups from an external source. Um, and this enables you to use those external user groups in planning security context, such as in processes, such as in processes, access rules, and in version accesses. I know all that's kind of technical. <laughs> um, getting into um, effective date, um, and I think this is an important one as well that I've heard come up more often lately. Um, so they are enabling effective date in Workday data sources from Workday Financials. So if you're using effective date in Workday Financials, you'll now be able to um, report, report effective date um, in time and in Workday data sources from Workday Financials. So this will improve the performance of the data loads from Workday Financials into Adaptive Planning. 
Um, so when you're managing reports from workday data sources in adaptive planning, you can now select task runtime as the report effective date to filter the data and reduce load times. Um, with the um, planning permissions, we are seeing some developments as well. So currently, um, if you deliver new permissions, uh, we are delivering new permissions to provide you with greater flexibility and control over user access. So two of those permissions that are enabled um, for users to download is uh, report data to Excel and sheets data to Excel. So you'll now be able to select who has the ability to do those functions um, and pulling that information out to Excel. And it gives you uh, more secure access at a more granular level within adaptive planning. Um, the other functionality for permissions that is being added is uh, a new create personal reports permission that enables users to both create view personal reports, create and view personal reports. Um, when you disable the new permission, users can only view shared reports. So um, this gives you that ability to uh, give somebody the ability to either create those personal reports, or maybe you just want them to see reports that are shared and you don't want them to have the ability to create personal reports at all. Um, some other uh, minor um, updates that are worth pointing out um, is on performance and scalability. Um, so performance and scalability improvements um, are being made to enable your model um, without compromising the ease of use. With this update, we're improving the process time of modeled sheets. So you may notice faster performance. Um, for example, if you append um, 100,000 rows to a modeled sheet that contains 900,000 rows, you'll notice that that import time is reduced by around 70%. We have also um, assigned two prompts in the processes overview. Um, so if you're currently using that um, prof process tracker within Adaptive, you'll now see that there are, um, instead of seeing the list of tiles that you see now, you'll see a compacted list on the top of the page when you're in that administrative screen. Um, and, and then you'll see the create new task and reassign existing tasks to somebody else um, in another place. So it'll be at the top of the page um, instead of where it's at now. So just a little bit of a visual change there. So don't be surprised by that. Um, and we're also improving how you manage user profiles in the administration screen. So on the edit user page, when you select username as email option, we now populate the username in the email field for you. So you no, no longer need to edit it. Um, and you can add the alternate email still. You can select the second option that's next to the email field. And you'll also be able to add users using um, the user interface or um, create user API. So you'll be able to um, import those in so it's no longer a add one by one by one, um, which I know can be tedious and has caused headaches in the past. Um, and you'll also be able to download search cell notes. Um, so if you're searching the cells, you'll get those results and you're now able to download those. So just some, some minor changes there um, at the end, um, but happy to answer any additional questions that anybody might have with those. Um, polling question number four. Oops, sorry, I went too far. There we go. Okay, so when was the last time you adopted a Workday feature release? Okay, we got some answers coming in. I'll give it just a few more moments. And closing out this poll in three, two, one. All right, thank you. Thank you everybody for your answers. Um, so it looks like never is the winner here. Um, and I mean, I don't know if that is because you're newer to 
um, workday or um, if you've just not had a need for the releases in the past. Uh, but it, we also got quite a few from the R1, which is great to hear that those releases were uh, adopted in your uh, instances. So good to hear. And we're happy to catch up with you on any uh, interest in any of the things we've talked about today. Um, and then um, that's the end of our presentation, but I think we are looking to open it up for any questions that anybody might have. And if you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and type them into that Q&A and we'll, we'll run through whatever comes through there. And I can't see the Q&A if there's any, oh, I found it. All right, sorry about that. Uh, we did have a question earlier, Brianna, if the slides would be available. I just want to let everybody know that the after the presentation, it's about 72 hours, everybody will receive an email with this slide deck as well as a link to the recording as well. Right, well, if we don't have any questions, uh, we can give everybody about 10 minutes back. But if you find that you have questions later on, feel free to reach out to myself or Justin, and we're happy to connect with you and answer any additional questions that you might have. Great. Justin, Brianna, thank you for your presentation today. Um, as we close out of the webinar, there will be a short survey on how we, how we did and how we can improve this for you in the future. Thank you, everyone, for joining.